All right, so pressure potential is um, symbolized with psi and the subscript of P, um, and it's defined as the hydrostatic pressure uh, exerted onto cell walls by the protoplast, which remember is the cell membrane plus everything inside the cell. Um, and then because of because the protoplast presses on the cell wall, the cell wall presses back onto that protoplast, which can cause the movement of water out of the cell. Um, so on the left here, we're looking at uh, positive pressure. Turgor pressure or pressure potential can be a positive number. Um, and let's say we're looking at, you know, positive 2.0 megapascals over here. So that just is again representing the pressure, um, it's similar to the pressure that uh, is exerted by the protoplast onto the cell walls and therefore back onto the protoplast uh, as a cell for example is filling with water. Um, on the right we're looking at a situation of negative uh, pressure and so in this case there's basically a suction effect um, find the right page here. Kind of like a suction effect pulling up on the water column. And so that's called negative pressure or tension, as it says here. Um, and an example of that uh, occurring in a plant would be in xylem um, as a result of <clears throat> transpiration. And we'll just abbreviate that from transpiration. And so we might see numbers uh, something like negative 2.0 megapascals. Um, all right. So positive pressure is going to help uh, plant cells become uh, retain turgor. Uh, negative um, pressure potential is going to be cells under tension. When cells become uh, when cells are losing water and the, pro the pl plasma membrane pulls away from the cell uh, wall, then the pressure potential can reach zero, but we don't usually see it go into the negative in that situation where it's just losing water due to uh, a change in osmotic pressure across the membrane uh, in nature, unless it gets to the point where wilting is taking place or we're looking at a, a, an extreme stress environment like drought or salt, uh, salinity stress. Um, but um, so looking at pressure potential can tell us kind of um, the, the status of the plant, the water status of the plant or the plant cell. All right, so other factors that we uh, mentioned that affect uh, water potential, if we remember our equation, we had uh, water potential is affected by um, osmotic potential plus uh, pressure potential and some other negligible negligible um, factors included things we also added which were things like um, the gravitational potential or um, pressure due to gravity and also the matrix potential. So let's talk about these for just briefly here even though they're negligible. Um, the potential, the gravitational potential is basically the um, pressure required to overcome the, the force of gravity basically. To overcome the force of gravity. Alright, now um, this term is, is affected by things such as um, the density of water, which we use as uh, a term called uh, P subscript W, and then also the acceleration due to gravity, and that has the term G and also the height 
above a reference state. And we'll call that H. So, so, so we can use the equation to, to calculate uh, gravitational potential as P sub W times G times H. And if for um, a particular solution of water, if we're looking at uh, this, this term here, P times G, uh, is equal to 0 0.01 megapascals. And let's say we're looking at uh, a height above a reference point of, say, one meter. Then that means the gravitational potential at one meter equals uh, 0 0.01 megapascals. Now let's say we bump that uh, height up to here, same PG times or PW times G at 10 meters. Well, what's the gravitational potential at 10 meters then? Then that gravitational potential uh, would be 0 0.1 megapascals. So basically 10 times uh, greater. So you can see that the gravitational potential becomes more important than with increasing height. Um, and for example, with um, when we're looking at um, heights associated with trees, um, heights of trees. But again, uh, cell to cell, it's not an important, such an important factor. And so it becomes a negligible factor in our equation for water potential. Okay. Uh, the other um, t term that we said was relatively negligible is matrix potential. And matrix potential is defined as the potential or the the, um, um, the pressure required to overcome matrix forces to overcome and matrix forces are equal to adhesive forces forces due to adhesion between water and other molecules. This becomes very important in soils when we're talking about the movement of water through soils and also with seed imbibition when seeds um, take on water to, to germinate. All right, so that's why we can leave those two factors out, but at least they, we know they're, they're initially part of the, the equation, but then we, we don't, we sort of basically ignore them. All right, so we're gonna move then next into um, the idea uh, of basically what is water potential, I'm reminding ourselves that water potential then therefore equals pressure potential plus osmotic potential. Um, which is then used to predict the movement of water, um, the direction of water movement. All right, so we're going to use some examples here. And uh, we see uh, the two different, basically an initial cell uh, here in the middle, which has a pressure potential of zero and a solute potential of negative 0.7. Uh, or we could say osmotic potential of negative 0.7 and we're going to calculate the water potential and to calculate it we just add the two together so the water potential if you recall from in class when we went over this is negative 0.7 megapascals now we're going to start with this uh, on the right first where the cell is immersed into a beaker of pure water. Anytime we're talking about a beaker of water, then we can say that the pressure potential is zero. There is no cell membrane involved with a beaker. So we're going to use zero as the pressure potential. We also know in pure water that the solute potential would also be zero. These are both in megapascals. Um, the osmotic potential, I should say, is zero because there are no solutes present. So no influence on the chemical potential of water, or the water potential due to solutes. So that gives us a water potential 
of zero megapascals in the pure water. So this initial cell is immersed into a beaker, then the um, beaker is going to have a higher, remember a higher mole fraction of water and therefore higher chemical potential or water potential um, and you can compare the numbers. Zero of course is a higher number than negative 0.7. Uh, the cell has a lower chemical potential. When we immerse the cell into the pure water beaker then it's going to start taking on water which is what you see here and that is going to put more pressure on the cell wall by the cell membrane so we're going to be calculating that um, so this is uh, and then at some point equilibrium is reached where the water has been taken up by the cell and then it starts to be counteracted by turgor pressure and the net movement of water becomes zero alright so at equilibrium when equilibrium is reached the water potential inside the cell equals the water potential outside the cell that's just a general rule. All right, and so in this case, the new water potential for the cell is going to equal zero, uh, zero megapascals. Um, the solute potential, and this is just an, a general rule here, uh, when we're looking at a cell in a beaker, the volume of the cell is so small compared to the volume of the beaker that the solute potential doesn't change much. So for our purposes, we just assume in this scenario, this kind of scenario where the cell is immersed in a hypotonic solution, that the, that the osmotic potential uh, does not change from its initial conditions. All right, so we'll look at negative 0.7 megapascals. Um, and so what we're left to calculate then, here I'll put an asterisk next to, is the pressure potential. So if the solute potential plus the pressure potential equals the water potential, then the pressure potential has to equal 0 0.7 megapascals, a positive number. Okay, so the pressure potential goes up. Does that make sense? If we go back to our scenario here, just looking dramat uh, diagrammatically what's happening. Water's entering the cell. That's going to put more pressure on the cell membrane. So the pressure potential should increase. So always go back and look at the logic of behind the numbers. So that takes care of a situation where the cell is immersed in a hypotonic solution. Now we're going to see on the left here the initial cell conditions, um, but now in this case the, the cell is immersed into a, a, a beaker with a solution of 0.4 molar sucrose. Now remember the concentration that is shown doesn't necessarily tell us what the solute potential or the osmotic potential is. So we have to use this equation down here, which is not going to be an equation that I'm requiring you to learn or to have to do on a regular basis, but it's good for seeing that um, solute concentration can be um, used to calculate osmotic potential. So we'll start again with calculating the water potential of the solution in the beaker. And as we said before, the pressure potential in the beaker is always going to be zero megapascals because there's no cell membrane. The solute potential we calculated below here uh, is negative 0.9 and that leaves us with a water potential of zero, uh, negative 0 0.9. When the initial cell is immersed into the beaker, the initial cell has the higher water potential than outside in the beaker, so it's the hypotonic solution with the higher uh, mole fraction of water and therefore the higher chemical potential of water. So then as the cell is losing water, we're going to see at equilibrium the pressure potential becomes zero because when the plasma membrane pulls away from the cell wall, it no longer has a positive, positive turgor pressure. Um, the solute potential is the value we're going to calculate because uh, when water leaves, then that solute potential is going to change. Uh, and then the water potential at equilibrium is going to equal the water potential outside the cell, 0 0.9. So that leaves a solute potential of 0 0.9 megapascals. Does that make sense? The solute potential decreases, meaning the solute concentration goes up. That makes sense because water is leaving the cell. So we'll review um, how this relates to a whole plant scenario next.